Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and today is Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. We're doing a live chat at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you're watching this at any other time, just know that you're watching an upload of a live chat. Pull you guys up on my phone. Back you go. We've never seen anything quite like this. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're just waiting for people to get into the room. I did a late uh, announcement about the live tonight. I'm having issues with my charger. I think I ran over it on with the wheels of my chair. <laughs> so it wants to charge sometimes and other times it does not. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading the shout outs. See, before 7 p.m., we had quite a few people in the room. We've got Vivian Cavi first. She says, hi, T and everyone. Carla Ford also says, hello, T and everyone with the wave. Celia Swain says, Hello, T and everyone. I'm early today. Robin Boyd's here saying good evening, all my quilting friends. Jennifer J is here saying hi, T and everyone. Teresa McCormick is saying hello, all. Poop Gal is here, says hi, T and everyone. Beautiful day in Maryland. Cheryl Clutes here says hello, T and T quilters. Melissa Mellinger, Mellinger is here. She says hello, waiting for the big moment from Wichita, Kansas. I heard something like sliding, and I don't even know what that was unless it was outside of my room. <laughs> I'm like, huh? We don't want an avalanche in here. Uh, Wind Sprinter is here saying hello from Maryland. Jackie Kay is here saying hello T and everyone. Glad to be able to join on time this week. Uh, Kim Burris is here, says hey there T and T Quilters. It's been a good day. Lisa Pegg says hi Miss T and friends. Janice Miller says hi. Tiffany Gary is here saying hello from Georgia. Remo J.S. says good evening TNT Quilters from Bowie, Maryland. Darcy Savelli is saying hi T and everyone from Minnesota. Judy Judy is here says hi T and Quilters. Mario Dennis says hello from Friendly, Montreal. Lisa, Melissa LaPay says good evening T and everyone. Cheryl Clute saying hi to Kim. Uh, Kim's asking how are you getting along with the Bernina? I haven't sewed since Saturday. I stayed in here a couple of hours after I live. And um, so far so good. I'm just trying to figure out how the bobbin indicator works as far as when it's telling you that it's low because the two times that I've needed to replace my bobbin so far, it has just run out. It hasn't given me any indicator and I haven't seen it. So I'm trying to figure out how exactly that works or if it's not working. So that's it so far. I have been looking at the few feet that I will need to buy. They had, um, well, not actually looking anymore because today, the month of September, they had their feet were 25% off. So I went and ordered feet. I actually went to a quilt shop and all of their feet are out. So I just did an order so I could get the sale price for the feet that I need. And they're going to let me know when they come in. So... I also ordered, like on this machine back here, you can see a multi-thread spool holder. I also ordered one for this machine. Um, I do have this wooden one here, but um, sometimes it just be a tad too much, too many loose threads that could get caught up in your flywheel. So I just prefer to have something a little bit more compact. So I mostly just store some of my 
specialty threads or just threads that I don't have room for on the other the other two thread racks right here. So that's kind of where I'm at. I am with the Bernina. Lisa says, is anyone doing stitch pink? Remo JS says thumbs up everybody. Thank you for the reminder. Sandra D. Agger is here. She says, hi, Tan, everyone. Sandy in the Bay Area. Cynthia Shade says, good evening from Chicago. Uh, June Billings. Oh, Kim saying that she will be doing the, what is it, Think Pink? Oh, Stitch Pink. Um, she will be doing that. And Virgie is here saying hello from Ohio to T and everyone. And let's see. June Billing says hi T and everyone. Joni Foote says hi T and everyone. Elaine Doucette's here saying hi all. Happy Wednesday. And Diane 57 is here saying good evening to everyone. Winter Baptiste is here saying hello T and everyone. Good night from TNT. Trinidad, I know. I don't know what the other T is. <laughs> Melissa says this that is a beautiful machine T. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just saying thank you as in for the compliment, because I surely didn't make it. <laughs> um Camille Anderson says hello to all. Good to be able to be back. Have missed you all. Hi Camille. Welcome back. Darcy says, remember to thumbs up everybody. Thank you, Darcy. Um, Janice Miller is here saying good evening everyone from San Diego Melissa I lived in Wichita years ago Mario's also reminding people to hit the thumbs up C-Rax is here saying hello quilters Pamela K. Tay says hello from Traverse City Michigan God's country hi Pamela welcome to the live uh, Don Cunningham says hi T quilts and friends Jackie K says, my live chat is not uploading. Anyone else? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Here we go again. I uploaded quite a few videos over the weekend as well as I uploaded videos on Monday and Tuesday. And every video that I've uploaded is back to adding extra minutes, making my video appear to be longer than it is. So I put the actual minutes in the title. So I'm having difficulties with YouTube myself. I've tried uploading the same file twice to get rid of it, and it just doesn't work. And it's so funny because on the um, YouTube studio, which is what we use to upload in the background, it has the correct minutes for my video. But on the published side, it's adding like 12 minutes to every video that I upload. So it's kind of crazy. And I don't see it happening to anybody else's video that I'm watching. So it's just happening to minds that it looks like to me because when I'm watching a video and they tell me that it's 20 minutes, the video is 20 minutes. And it's a video that they uploaded the day before or the same day. So I'm the only one that's getting it, but I don't understand. Um, June Hansen is here saying hi, TN, everyone. We've got Leela Dyker. She says hello, TN, everyone. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, that's Eric. I couldn't remember what the other T was, and I've <laughs> sent her, I've mailed stuff to her, but <laughs> it's over my head. <laughs> and by the way, hello, everyone. <laughs> that's from Eric. Kevin the Quilter is here. He says, hey, T Quilters, gonna be quiet for a bit. Don't mind me. I'm just over here eating on a fresh baked turkey and roasted butternut squash. Want some, Miss T? Laughing out loud. You know you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin is so wrong. <laughs> Susan T. is here, says hi, T. and everyone. Beautiful day here after lots of rain. Pamela is asking what Bernina said. I just got the B475 QM. This is the B770 uh, Quilters Edition as well. Um, <laughs> he not right. <laughs> Kevin's still acting up here. Teresa Louise, I quilt too, says hi, Miss T and friends. Michael Piccarelli says, hey, pretty girl, miss you. Hi, Mike. Yes, I'm still, I, well, I was really busy the last week, and then 
this week hasn't quite gone as planned, but that's okay. I'm at least getting some, some videos out, but it ain't going as planned. But that's how it is sometimes. Uh, Quilting for the Soul is here. Says hello to you and everyone. Lisa says that, Eric, I called myself sending you a message in Messenger about a Hawaiian quilt. Did you happen to get it? Um, and Pam says, call me Pam. And she says, I love mine. She loves her banana. Uh, I love sewing when it's a rainy day. That's from Elaine. And uh, let me go back and see. If I missed something, I must have missed something. Nope. Because somebody was saying, laughing out loud at Teresa Louise, but... Okay. All right. I don't have anything to talk about today. <laughs> I have been busy uh, editing videos and uploading videos. If you all don't know, I have uh, parts one and two up for this beginner string quilt. I... On Saturday night, I began sewing my rows. They're sewn on a diagonal, so that's what I'm currently working on. And I have not been back in this room since last Saturday. So that's where I'm at on that. I did upload a video for the wood turd items. If you haven't seen it, I think it was Sunday or Monday. I can't remember. Too many days. Um, but it lists everything that the wood turner makes that... Except for the, he makes a knitting bowl, but he makes that according to whatever wood he has. And then he doesn't have a price for that because it's kind of like what size you want and all of that kind of stuff. So I didn't even put that in the video. But everything else that he makes has been put into the video. Uh, the order is going to close next Wednesday so that I can get the order compiled and get it to him by uh, Thursday, no later than Friday for sure, trying to get our order back early the next week if possible um so if you're wanting anything on those orders those are custom orders you get to pick whatever it is that you want in whatever style you want and then those are prepaid orders that have to be paid by next wednesday otherwise i don't send your order in um unless you've heard from me differently uh, there is some local people that i just tell them to hold their money until i actually deliver the product so other than that, most people, your order should be paid for prior to me placing the order. Otherwise, your order will not be placed. So I have sent out invoices for people that were already on my list that had gotten on the list early to remind you. So I've had, I'd say about three out of 10 people have paid their invoices. So if you don't know if wondering if i've sent the invoice just check your paypal you don't have to look for the actual email reminder from paypal with the invoice you can just log into your paypal and go ahead and pay your invoice um i probably will send one reminder next week and i'm not going to do a whole lot of reminders on it because i don't want to appear to be harassing people so um that's why i'm just mentioning it in the video um what else trying to think what else did i work on i'm still editing videos um i had to do some stuff for my mom this week so that's why i didn't get a whole lot done and then i actually made a trip to the quilt shop and i decided to just take my little time and use it as a field trip and kind of just walked around the store even though i wasn't looking for a whole lot i did buy two pieces of fabric for a border and a binding on a quilt top that was in their clearance section. I'm working on a, what is it? A layer cake quilt. And all it is is just a layer cake and you have no borders. But then I wanted to go ahead and add a border and then I got a binding fabric and I'm hoping that it matches up. Um, so that I got that in addition to ordering the Bernina feet. What else? I think that's it for me. I'm, all I'm remembering anyway. I did order. They do recommend that you put your banana into a, um, I don't know what they call it, but it's like a USB uh, power source or something. It's like this big uh, surge protector that you can also charge your USB. 
And then if your power, power goes out, you also have some battery life on it. So if you're machine embroidering or something, you can continue your design or you've got time to tell it to stop because you've got a power outage. And instead of having it just go dead on you and not remembering where you are. That's one of the things I do like about my baby lock embroidery machines is that if you have an outage or if you even cut the power off yourself, it remembers where you were to the stitch when you come back. So I'm not sure because I haven't done that with the Bernina yet to know if it remembers anything without having that. But I've seen on a lot of Bernina sites or Bernina groups where people are recommending that you get that. So I ordered one. It came today. And uh, I ordered it through Amazon and I ended up sending it back. <laughs> it, uh, I opened it up. The box looked kind of suspect. And it just looked like somebody had used this thing for a long period of time and then they decided to send it to me. But it cost like $63, I want to say. I'm just guessing. Um, and I was, the box looked like it had been opened and reclosed. You know when you get cords from the factory, they're kind of wrapped very neat. These cards were not wrapped very neat. And so the package for the manual was already open. So I took it back to the UPS. I took it right back today. It came today and I got it out of my house today. So I don't pay full price for a return product. That's not something that I do. So and it took me a month. Because I knew I was getting this machine, so I tried to have it here early before I got the machine. And uh, it took me a month, and it still sent me something that looked like it was years old. Covered in, like, it was kind of like brown dust, but it wasn't the box because none of it came out of the box. So I don't know where this brownish kind of dust, and then it had like some caked on stuff that I'm like, after I touched it, I'm like, I guess I need to go wash my hands now because I don't know what that was but it did like flake off and I said oh no 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 so you gotta be careful with some things I try to watch when I'm ordering stuff especially when I'm spending a lot of money on Amazon that I'm watching uh, some things you can't return and so I make sure that it's something that I can return and being a prime member I can mostly return just about everything but there is still a few things that I can't return. So I'm only at half power, but I'm going to go ahead and take this off the charger. Just because every time I move it, I'm getting an error message. Anyway, look like I got a top chat. Let's see who that is. That's from Darcy Savalli. Thank you so much. She sent me $19.99. <laughs> and I, I have to laugh at the $99 because I have a youtuber i watch and he does free 99 where he's giving free 99 knowledge i think that's really cool so thank you so much i appreciate that darcy let me go back and see who else has come into the room let's see um Maddie Barnum is here. She says, hello, T and everyone. <laughs> Kevin's going to get put in timeout, even though he's a moderator. <laughs> Diane says, new headphones giving me trouble. Emily so who is here. She says, hi, T and everyone. Hi, Emily. June Hansen says, yes, I did see. That was good to see. She's talking about the videos. I think I was talking about that first. Uh, Lenora Scott is here. She says hello from Texas. Hey, Lenora. Welcome to the chat. Dorsey says, I watched your two videos. They are helpful for getting perfect triangles. And I didn't even know that my board wasn't all the way in the screenshot, but at least I was telling you what those numbers were. I was kind of mad when I got through and I'm, when I was editing and I'm going, I don't even have the board whole shot. My camera must have bumped up or something. So... I apologize for that. Sharon Lewis is here. She says, hi, Tian, everyone. I'm still at work, but listening to the chat. That's awesome. Claudette Bettis is here saying, hello, Tian, everyone. Mario says, I updated my Excel project sheet today. I have a long, unfinished column. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. And I saw some people had went and looked at my Excel uh, worksheet on how I keep track 
and what step I'm on in a project. And uh, if you haven't seen that video, just search T quilts and say Excel, and then it's gonna pull up where you're gonna see a piece of paper that I printed out, and it has some highlights on the paper. Um, and it has like all of my type data with highlights on those lines. But it's just a starting point. You make your own the way you want to use it. So I did it so that I would know if my blocks were sewn, if my quilt top was sewn, or if I needed to add sashing, if I had a border on it, if it was quilted, if it had the binding on it, did I make the label? I also added the size and the date that I started and finished the project. And so I keep track of everything that I do that way. So when I finish a quilt that's like 10, 15 years old, I know exactly <laughs> what date that I actually started that project on. So I so look for that video. It is very helpful if you don't know Excel or don't have Excel, but you can still probably do something very similar in a word processing project. Or you can even do it in writing, like you can put it in a book. The only reason why I like Excel is because every year I copy my sheet and then I take everything off of the old sheet, like for 2019, on my old sheet, it stops. So I know exactly how many projects I finish every year. And I even have a graph uh, that tells me if I'm going up or down in production, per se. So you can do a lot more with the data in Excel than you can if it's in a book. Uh, if it's in a book, you've got to, every page is going to be in, in your book for, for life. Whereas on Excel, once I finish a project, I'm not looking at that project anymore. I'm only looking at my works in progress without me having to rewrite the entire sheet every year. Lenora says, I love your quilts. Thank you, Lenora. Mm. <laughs> Diane talking about, yay, I can finally hear. <laughs> Don says, I watched your Excel quilt project sheets on YouTube today. Very informative, and you're very organized. And I keep telling people all the time that I have organized chaos. I am not neat by any means, but don't move it and don't touch it. Um, you know, I'm normally okay with finding things, normally. It's when I go put things in those special places that I want to, you know, this shouldn't go in the regular spot because I'll forget it's there when in true essence, that's where you should just go ahead and put the stuff where it belongs, even if you're going to use it the next day or need to remember to get it the next day. I have issues with my special places, you know, <laughs> but yes, but I have very organized chaos. Uh, Francis Jackson is here saying hello. Hello, Francis. Welcome. Peggy is here, says, hi, TNT Quilters. Love your new videos. Thank you, Peggy. Trying to put some content out, girl. Um, and uh, Frances is also saying hi, T, and everyone. She's having issues with that keyboard, which we all have issues with every now and then. Uh, Joan Elkin says hi, T, and everyone. Maria Mayer is here. She says hi, T, and everyone. Working on my pineapple blocks. Yay. Ugh, pineapple. Don't even want to talk about that. I told you all that I was going to try to have my pineapple quilt quilted by the end of the month, right? It's not going to happen. I do have it loaded. It's been loaded for about three or four days now. I can't remember what day I actually loaded. But I've had all kinds of issues with that pineapple quilt. So I talk about that in my completions for September video. So I'm just going to save the saga for that, okay? You know, some things just want to get done when it wants to get done. So that's kind of where that's at. But good luck on your pineapples, Maria. Diane says, big hugs to everyone. Glad to see all your smiling faces. That's Diane57. Um, Kim is saying hello and welcome to all joining the chat. Remember, thumbs up, please. Thank you, Kim, for getting people welcome before I can get to them. Uh, Maddie says, T, will there be another Zoom gathering? Zoom will be happening on this Sunday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We say we go for two hours, but, you know, it's Eric has to go to work, so I think now we have to get off by midnight or something. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we say two hours, we commit to two hours, but it seems like we just hanging in there when we start talking and so on so 
And Eric's been really great with those. He's coordinating those. And he's a very great host. He has uh, things to, like, um, I guess you call them icebreakers, where he has particular questions or things, activities that we do um, when we're in the live uh, Zoom meetings. Mario says, I do all that too, T. <laughs> uh, Peggy says, I need that Excel info. Time to get organized now that it's getting cooler out. I need to get them finished. Yes. Uh, Kathleen Champ is waving, saying hi to everyone. Google Drive is free and has Excel-like products, so that's great. Mario's giving you all an option. I am just a Microsoft user. I use it in my work. I actually... Uh, created databases in uh, works, um, not worksheets. I did worksheets too, but you have to have a worksheet in order to make your graphs. But that's what I did for my career and my job as a research analyst. I created databases that collected data from all departments throughout our hospital. And then I got that data out of access and then used it in Excel to manipulate that data so that I can output it and get my reports that I needed to send to internal and external organizations actually because we had to be accredited so but i grew up learning uh, microsoft products and started working there when i was 19 so that's just where i tend to go is the microsoft side um let's see My, my screen uh, jumped on me, guys. Hold on. We've got Cheryl Bean here. It says, hi, Tian, everyone. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome. Um, let's see. Elaine says, the safe place. <laughs> yes. She's got that weird look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's got a safe place. I call it a special place. <laughs> uh, Remo says, Best Buy has a good surge protector. You know, I haven't been in Best Buy since. Um, I haven't ordered or done anything. You can't go into Best Buy stores, at least not in my area. You, everything is curbside pickup. So I haven't really done a whole lot with them. If I've got an order, I just tend to go online to Amazon because I can get free shipping as a Prime member, whereas Best Buy, you've got to spend a certain amount of money in order to get it uh, delivered free. So... But I'll check into that and see what they got and see if they're, I'll check again and see if they're open. Because I do like to kind of handle those type of things. I don't like to just b blindly buy. But since I don't even return many items on Amazon, I can't even remember the last time I returned something to Amazon. But I hurry up and put this one back in the mail because I'm like, you're not going to sit here in my house. Um, send me something used. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Francis says, I finally got my pineapple blades cut out. Now to start cutting fabric. Yes. Um, let's see. Oh, they're saying that it's October 4th is the date for Sunday for the next Zoom. Vivian says, TM on my second pineapple quill. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Looking forward to that share in the T-Quilts group. Kevin says, Eric is the host. With the most, aside from Miss T. <laughs> Eric does a great job on the Zooms. Tiffany's Quilting Life is here. She says, hello, T, and hello, friends. I am late, but I was napping. Nah, I am kind of awake. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> you know, when you first wake up. <laughs> you awake, but you <laughs> not really functioning at 100. And then Eric is also saying, remember, what happens in Zoom stays in Zoom. Deanna J is here saying hello to all. Um, let's see. Um, was DOS out when you started working or floppy disk? I, uh, DOS and floppy disk were out. I actually, I, the first computer that I actually worked on was the Apple, uh, it was an Apple computer, but it wasn't like Microsoft. I don't know if it was Microsoft Apple, their first computer. But they had, it had a program on their word processing program called Framework. 
And that's what we used at Word to do word processing. We had no databases. Uh, everything came through as a DOS text file that we had to then download and manipulate that data. It was kind of weird. Um, you know, you had the mainframe computer systems that if they didn't make the report for you, you weren't going to get a report. But um, when we started getting into the uh, Microsoft Access side, then we were able to get those database programs where we can make our own. But I started with a computer that had the five and a quarter floppy disk, the bigger floppy disk, not the three and a half. So, yes, I've been on computers for a while. And I also learned DOS, too. I used to do a little bit of DOS stuff. I have completely forgotten everything that I ever learned, though. <laughs> That's been way too long ago. Uh, Eric is just reiterating that Zoom is on Sunday, October 4th, 2020, and um, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, so I had the time wrong, guys. <laughs> 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? Zoom info is on the t Quills Facebook group page. I hope you uh, made it an announcement, Eric. I tried to take the old one out, so when you put the new one in, make it an announcement so it'll always be up at the top. Uh, hopefully, it's up there at the top. If not, you can just search the word Zoom. It should come up. Remo says, I'm like you. Where I lay it, it better stay. Or you will catch hell. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, the nice thing is I don't have anybody in my house right now due to COVID, but me and my husband. So it's either me or him at this point. Uh, Tiffany says, I'm only functional at 50% all day lately. I always feel like I just woke up. It's weird lately. Cheryl says, we have curbside at Best Buy, but you can go in. Okay, so I guess, because I usually, I use Best Buy a lot to meet some quilters. <laughs> and so it looks like everybody was doing curbside. So I will check and see if I can go in, because if I can go in, that would be better for me so that I can see what exactly is going on with these units. Mm. Mario says, word perfect five. On 15 discs. <laughs> and it was like, if you had a file, you better remember which disc you put it on. <laughs> You'll never see that file again. Lisa says, got your flu shot yet? I've been giving them left and right. Please get yours soon. You know what's funny? And I'm one of, them, I'm one of those weird people. I got the flu shot every year I was working because it was mandated. And, and I didn't, I don't really have a problem getting the flu shot, but I have not had a flu shot in the years that I have uh, not been working since I've been retired. It's five years now. And I don't get as sick as I used to get when I got the flu shot, which is very weird. I'm mostly getting sick in like spring and summer from sinus things. I don't really get the winter um cold issues and things since I don't get the flu shot and that is very very strange to me very strange and even my sinuses when they flare up they never flare up as bad that I have to go into a doctor to have them to have them give me some antibiotic or prednisone so very weird but I was I got one every year for 30 years until the last five years um Darcy says, me and my family have to Lisa about the flu. June got hers on Monday. Sandra says, fireworks was awesome. Frameworks was awesome when it came out, but it lost out when Microsoft came out with Excel. Exactly. Because you could only do word processing. And I like framework because I'm a computer nerd anyway. Uh, but for some people, it was just a little bit difficult for them to work in it. But to me, it wasn't difficult at all. I actually loved it. Eric says, I did make the Zoom info as an announcement, but Facebook redid their layout again, so I couldn't pin to the top. Also couldn't do a calendar event. Wow, I didn't know that, so let me go back and check on that. I've been pinning stuff, but I didn't know they had changed. Um, Kim says, I haven't taken a flu shot since 1974. <laughs> God, I am horribly allergic. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Don says, I liked Word Perfect. Not on this, though, in Lotus. But Microsoft Word and Excel took over, yes. And I've used Word Perfect a little because that's what I had at home. Um, because Microsoft products were so expensive and Word Perfect products were a little bit more cost effective for us home users. So that's what I used at home. But um, uh, my job, Microsoft got really cozy with the businesses to make sure that their products were number one. And so if you were an employee working and you used Microsoft products, they gave us a discount code. It was like literally giving it to us almost for free. It was so reasonable. So that's why I'm a Microsoft girl. Cheryl says, we started with mainframe in design. That one day I came to work. Then one day I came to work, there was a computer on my desk. Sink or swim. <laughs> Get that right. And I know that messed up a lot of um, managers, too, because everybody had to learn how to use the computers. It wasn't just the secretaries doing it. At one point when, you know, when computers weren't popular, the secretaries did all the typing in the department. And that's what I started as was a secretary. So, um, you know, we were doing everybody's typing. You need a memo type, you know, it came through the secretary. You need a presentation type, it came through the secretary. Then when it got to the point where they gave everybody computers, it was a mess, people trying to learn stuff. But I'm going to tell you, my boss, she was already in her 60s. I typed everything for her. She didn't care. She wasn't going to do it. So, uh, But I did get to teach some of my other people in my department to use it, so I wasn't doing everybody's typing. But, yep. Um, Don says, how odd that Bill Gates is, is now so tuned into the virus. Um, Teresa saying she's allergic to eggs, so the flu makes her sick. Cool Gail says, my pharmacy nor my doctor is given the flu shot until October 15th. Um, <laughs> Eric is crazy. My flu shot in, involved adult beverages. <laughs> Seems to work every year, and I come out happier than before. <laughs> Tiffany says, no flu shot for me. Makes me go into bed and mess flare. So I stopped about seven-ish years ago. Same here, T. I don't do the shot. Sorry. I'm allergic to feathers. That's from Kim. She says, the one time I took the shot, I spent nine months in and out of the hospital with bronchitis and pneumonia. Doctor said, don't ever take another one. And I listened. And that's what I felt like. I think sometimes when you have other sinus issues, I've had walking pneumonia before, even taking the flu shot. And uh, so it's just kind of weird. And they don't say that the flu shot will prevent you from getting it. It's just one strain that they think is the most active strain. And you can easily get another one. But I just feel like I do better without it, which is so weird when I happily lined up for 30 years to get it. I wasn't protesting I didn't have any side effects from it, like from getting it the shot that I was aware of. I just felt like I still was sick, you know, for a good chunk of the winter anyway. Didn't matter. I didn't have the flu, but I was still sick for a good chunk of it. Um, Elaine's telling Eric cheers. <laughs> Sarah saying, my doctor hasn't called me yet. Uh, June says, uh, she's talking to Lisa. Um, Mid-October is our flu shot clinic. Best time to get it. Had three MS patients in today at TIFF. Everyone reacts differently. People are afraid of COVID, so trying to protect themselves. T-Rex said, had my shot August 31st, threatened by my Puma doc. I don't know what that is. Pumanologist? I don't know what type of doctor that is. Joyce Rockamore is here saying howdy to my quilting family. Hey, Joyce. Welcome. Joyce says, looks like it does things to everyone. Remo says, husband and sons like to come in my sewing room, and they like to touch my things. Well, I have to tell my husband, you know, you got to stop being curious around my stuff because... When I ask him about stuff, then he's saying that he's never touched it or 
never had it, but then I have to remind him that I saw such and such in your hand, you know, so you just need to leave my stuff alone. But he's very curious about the quilting products. He just don't want to use them the way that they're intended to be used. He's just nosy. <laughs> Kevin says, excuse me, you went to a quilt shop without little old me? Yes, I did, because I had just today. It was the last day. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> um... Oh, it's a lung doctor. That's from Jim. Thank you. I got to cut short today. Oh, okay. Eric's saying goodbye. Bye, Eric. He says he'll see everybody uh, either Saturday in a live chat or Sunday on Zoom. Um, this week in Quilt Expo in Fredericksburg, Virginia is starting. I'm thinking that's what she's saying. Yeah, starting tomorrow. I'm going to put T in timeout now, but that's Kevin. No, you not. <laughs> I think stores and online are starting to get fabric in now. That's from Don. Okay, so I don't know if anybody, if you've got new people here that's got questions that are quilt related. I don't even have my watch on. We still got 20 minutes if you all got questions you want me to answer. As I said, I don't have anything on topic today um, to talk about just because I've been busy editing. So I've been kind of just sitting in a seat for the last few days editing video. It takes a while. Edit video. Well, first I have to download all the video from my um, flash drive that's in my phone. And then that takes a little while. And then it, I have to import it all into my editing software then i have to produce well after i edit the video which it takes a whole lot longer to edit than it do to record the video like almost four or five times as long as how many minutes i've recorded and then i have to produce it then i upload it then i gotta create thumbnails upload those it's a mess <laughs> okay. yes so it's a process and that's for every video so i kind of been just hunkering down in my seats and then between that working with my mom and you know other little items around the house so just a lot going on right now um just making sure so if you got any quick related questions now would be a great time to get them answered by not only me but some other quilters in the room will could be of some assistance Again, I do have, for people that have come in late, I do have two parts to the sew along for the strings quilt here that I'm currently working on. Beginner friendly project before we start working on the Cleopatra on our Saturday sew and chats. Um, I'm hoping that I can get back in here and get this top all put together so I can just sew the borders on on Saturday. That's my hope, but we'll see. <laughs> you know things happen <laughs> uh, maybe I'll just leave this here and continue sewing on this part on Saturday that's fine too I've just not been back in this room I've been so busy so I have four rows completed and another row that's I think is sewn together no this piece here two more rows so four up there two right here is six so I have six rows sewn at this point and I got five big rolls left to go and then the corners. So that's kind of where I'm at. So I might just leave it because I probably won't finish it all in the sewing chat anyway. Um, Mario says, I watched your videos on New York Beauty and I appreciate your tip about measuring the pattern by pieces yes that's uh one of the paper piecing projects that i have i have a lot of blocks i just haven't worked on it in years it's one of those quilts i really want to get done but it takes a whole lot of time and so i tend to work on that kind of stuff at retreats but then other projects have bumped that back so it is one of my favorite um paper piecing projects that i haven't gotten done i do have I'm just going to guess about 20 blocks or so, 25 blocks done on that project. But I even want to piece the border as well. So, but thank you for that. 
And Lisa says, that's why I only do seam ripping videos. <laughs> she is too funny. Um, Don says, how big will the string quilt be? And that is something I put up two parts of the video and completely forgot about that, okay? Um, right now, it's kind of like 84 square inches because I just created something big and... I created not something big. I created something fast and electrical just to get started before I had started sewing that first Saturday, a, almost a week and a half ago. And so I wasn't even paying attention to size. I was just like, how many blocks do I need to make so I can tell them how many blocks? And it came out to be 25, and that's why I just said make 25 blocks. But you can make this any size you want. You can add and delete. You can add another call another row so that that way it won't be square you can make it so that the next row doesn't go all the way up to the corner so that way you can make it so that it's rectangular you can adjust it um mine's just happened to be square in all fairness i tend to make square quilts because if i'm making it for my queen bed it all works out in the end Although this one is not going to be a queen quilt. I just have in my head, sometimes it's hard for me to get out of my head that I'm not making a square quilt. Most of my quilts are square. Um, let's see. Maria says, can't wait for Saturday night. <laughs> Teresa says, the baby quilt you quilted saves quilted leave zone for a client was great those waves brought it to light i don't know she says the baby quilt you quilted i know what she's talking about uh, she says those waves brought it to life yes and those were just freehand waves so if you can you can do that on your standard home sewing machine i think when you first start it kind of looks weird um but as you keep adding then they end up working out well and also you have a serpentine stitch most machines do in the decorative stitches section of your more modern machines if you uh, lengthen the stitch length on that stitch it would make its own little wavy stitch and you can do it with your feet dogs up you don't even have to free motion quilt it um susan says i went through all my quilt books this week I have doubles of some, laughing out loud, and a few I didn't even realize I had. So many books. Yes, I can open up my own little library over here with books. I had gone through a couple of shelves a few years ago, and that's when the, the uh, leftover books that nobody got um, that I have in my Facebook group, some of the older ones, because I started with the ones in my basement. But I probably need to go back through there again and, and reduce some more of those, but I haven't done that yet. And then I got books upstairs as well it's ridiculous you know we are collectors that's what i say you know one day we're gonna do a project you know june says saturday we will be having a fall vendors i might go and see what it's all about that's fun francis says do you have any more blue oh high skies jelly roll fabrics left um you know i i and i guess in essence no because I have one left and I had it was mentioned in Saturday's live that somebody wanted it and so I, I emailed her and haven't heard back from her but by then somebody else has asked about it too so I've got two people inquiring about it so I will just say at this time no I do not I do have two other kits I uh, saw that I have available I didn't even put them on my Facebook maybe I'll go get those and show you that and uh, see if anybody's interested in that. And then I can also get, hopefully that fabric is up there that I bought. I can show you that too. So let's see. My fabric is in, my fabric is in a big mess. I think I'm going to straighten it up tomorrow. And I was telling people last time, Darcy, in, I don't know if it was last Saturday in the sewing chat or last Wednesday, but it was recent. And I was telling people, my biggest accomplishment was, wrapping all of my fabric onto i put it on comic boards you know they got those expensive uh things that you can buy to wrap your fabric on i felt like with me having what 1600 pieces of fabric or more 
<laughs> that that was going to be very costly. So what I did was I bought by the hundreds comic boards. And they're very thick cardstock. So they're not like regular paper cardstock that you put into your printer. They're a little bit thicker than that. But I've wrapped up to five, six yards of fabric on there. And the whole point of it is just to keep everything one size. And I, and I go ahead and pin mine. A lot of people were, if you're living in an area that's very humid, uh, my house is not humid, it's humid outside, but I don't tend to have much issues with humidity in my home. So I have pen in mine. Mine has been pinned for five years. I haven't pulled out one pen and saw any rust. So it's working fine for me. And even if I have a little rust spot in the top part, that's just the top part. So I'm okay with that too. Uh, I can cut around it or in a scrap quilt, it's not going to be noticed anyway. So... Um, but I found that when I go to use fabric, because it's all nice and stacked, I can pull out the entire stack, get what I want out of the stack, and then I'm more apt to put it back up, and it's still nice and neat in the stacks. And I find that I'm using my stash more. There were times when I might need one piece of fabric, and it might be a piece of orange, and I'll look at that uh, shelf, and it was all crammed in there because it was so tight, and I had so much stuff in there that I, I go, I, it'll be quicker for me to go to the fabric store and buy a yard of fabric for some binding before I go into that. So it just depends on um, what you want to do. So I think organizing your stash is great because then you're more apt to using it and you kind of know where everything is. Hold on. Um, Jackie says, T, I made a Cleopatra fan block with the paper, with a paper template. Took a little angle thinking it would, thinking, but it went well. It took a little thinking, but it went well. I think I'll order that acrylic template to be more accurate, putting this one in sampler. Vivian says, T, for the October birthday mine is on 10 3 okay i asked you all to send me the birthdays in an email because putting it into chat doesn't really work very well because i'm in chat <laughs> so i don't know if i remember and that's going to be next wednesday that i'm doing um birthday shout out so if you want to put be put on the list you need to send that to me in an email or something not in chat um Quilting for the Souls, talking to Sandra, talking to Kim. And Reem, see, you got other people telling me their birthdays, but everybody, if you're wanting to be added to the birthday shout outs for next week, for the month of October or any month, you can go ahead and give me your birthday month, even if it's April. So if you want to be added to the T Quilts chat room birthday shout outs, I do it the first Wednesdays of the month. Just go ahead and email it to me, please. Tiffany says, I use comic board card too, and I pin with tiny pins. Work fine here in dry Arizona. And I use my old applique pins first, the real little bitty ones, get rid of them. You know, I used the pins I didn't really want to use, and then I started using my quilters, those big yellow pins just to get rid of them because I got so many of them and I'm like, how many big pins do I need? Not a lot. <laughs> so I start using those too. Using whatever I don't want to use on a daily basis. Uh, Kim says, going through a tote a while back, I found a box full of patterns. My grand and great grand had clipped from Kansas City Star from 1930s, 1934, all in great condition. Now that's a fine, that is awesome. I've done some of the blocks. I've done a quilt that was a sampler. I think uh, my small group, we did 24 blocks that were the Kansas City Star patterns. And we all just put them together any way we wanted. She says, I also bolt on the store bolts for, for four yards or more. And I used to do that, but they just take up so much space because the bolt is so thick. So I actually took and got rid of all of my bolts. And then I was able to put more fabric in. <laughs> kind of crazy. Because I used to keep all of my stack and whack fabrics 
and my uh, backing fabrics on the boat because I had so much of it. Because most of the time when I buy backing fabrics, I would buy the whole boat. And then I would just put it there. But then as I start using it, I might have just three yards left and I still got the whole boat. So I started uh, anything that was like five yards or less, I just took off the boats because they're bulkier to the store. Susan says, that's awesome, Takim. I love those patterns. I have a whole set of books with all the patterns from the Kansas City Star. There are 10 of them. Uh, Mario says, wow, Kim, you are lucky. I have no fair family heirlooms. I didn't have it. I don't have any family heirlooms now until recent. My, I got a uh, sewing machine from my grandmother, but it's a singer clone. It's not the singer. It's some other brand that cloned the singer in... I want to say, was it Japan or China that did it first? I can't remember. I want to say Japan. And um, and so now my mom just gave me some jewelry. And I know it's real because my mom is real funny about jewelry. If you give her jewelry for her birthday or Christmas or something like that, some special occasion, she takes it to the pawn shop and asks them how much would they give her if she pawned it. She, <laughs> She is so funny. She take your stuff to see if it's real. <laughs> My mom's a hoot. Uh, Janice uh, says, yes, Kim, I remember those patterns and have made a quilt. Lisa says, I'm telling you, October 12th is a great day. Kendra says, you're keeping me smiling. Thanks. She's saying and waving. You're welcome. Susan says, throwing more fabric is the best. Buying fabric is better than going to bingo, laughing out loud. Now, you know what? I had stopped going to bingo. I had, I'm not, I've only been going to bingo like the last year with my daughter and my niece. And then I kind of started liking it. And I go, well, it at least gets me out of the house. Because as you all know, with us quilters, we work with our quilts at home. And so we're mostly homebodies for the most part. I know we can take hand projects places. But for the most part, quilters are at home because that's where your sewing machine is. So I started going to bingo once a week, and I kind of enjoyed it. And then I just stopped for a little while because I felt like the hall I was going to, they um, got into electronic machines, and people were buying all kinds of electronic machines, and they was, like, walking around and letting the machines do the work for them. And I'm like, this is not bingo. I can't win. I'm not playing against a fair uh the stacks are ah they're stacked against me because these people are using computers and i'm actually using the paper because i like the actual process of finding the numbers which is what you should do but when you're using the machines the machines are finding the numbers for you so they're walking around they're going to get food they're getting drinks they're having parties and i'm like this is not bingo but now i do kind of miss it now but i don't know I just think we need to get rid of the machines. That's just me. <laughs> I got to find a building that don't use the machines. Dorsey says, I have my grandma's Bible that is about 100 years old. Cheryl says, I have used jumbo plastic paper clips on the boards. That's great, too. I plan to add shelves in my closet someday, so that will be for only larger boats. Um... I have a flip chart with KC star patterns. It shows the blank in four sizes on each block. It shows the placement for four sizes on each block. I don't know what she's trying to say. Uh, my brother is here he's saying, hi, sis. Everyone, hope everyone stays safe. Time to go away from me. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I don't know if he's coming or going. <laughs> um, Mario says, before COVID, I used to go to bingo twice a week. I won 14000 Wow. In 2017. Now, I will tell you, the first day I went to a bingo hall, it was on my birthday last year, 2019. And I actually won. I won about $250. So I kept 150 and then I gave I went with my daughter and my niece and I gave each both of them 75 or something like that. So I actually split the winnings, but that was a uh, birthday luck. Haven't won since, okay? 
And then Dorsey agrees with me. She says, that's cheating bingo. That's right. Angela has never been to bingo. Don says, Mario, wow. Now, that's bingo. Yes, it is. Uh, Angela says, measurements for four, one block. For four, one block in four sizes. So, yeah. It's actually 8 o'clock. I got a few more. Let's see. Susan says, I refuse to go to bingo when I go to the nursing home. My daughter picks out. <laughs> mm -mm. Sarah says, hello, everyone. It's my first time here on your channel. Hi, I listen to everyone's uh, talking about quilting and stuff. So thank you. We're about to end, Sarah. Thank you so much and welcome. For any new people, please subscribe to my channel. And also hit that notification bell. Once you subscribe, it'll let you know when I'm live. And also when I upload videos, I'm still in the process of uploading videos. Also, um, Saturdays. We got live chat on Saturday, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, I do a two-hour sew-in chat. So I'll be still working on this quilt here probably. Uh, sewing rows together on a diagonal. And uh, I have parts one and two up on my channel, so you can go back and watch those. Again, if you're wanting any wood turn products, please notify me via email, tquilts at tquilts.com, so that I can get your prepaid orders in. When you email me, I'll send you a PayPal invoice using the email that you use to send to me, so you can pay for your invoice. And then I'm hoping that those orders will come back the second to the mid of the month by the 15th for sure but he normally gets them back like the next week but just in case i try to give him at least a week to get our order made and then i mail your orders back the following week once they arrive in the mail so that's kind of it uh, for people that came late too if you had pre-ordered some items i've sent your invoices so go sign in to paypal and please pay your invoices because if they're not paid they will not be ordered and i'm just going to cancel those invoices next wednesday if they're not paid and i will send one reminder to people um maybe on monday of next week if your invoice isn't paid peggy is reminding everybody to hit the thumbs up thank you peggy i appreciate that angel says i cannot gamble i want my money back if i lose and that's the thing when i go like people spend hundreds of dollars at bingo and i'll go and i'll just say i'm spending 20 bucks and sometimes i spend the 20 and sometimes i don't it just depends on what i'm doing but I just make an, uh, it's like if I'm going to a movie and I'm buying popcorn, I kind of use my bingo as my entertainment. So I don't really go anywhere else. So I just had allowed it myself that amount of money. So I make sure that I stick to it. I'm not going to go into a bingo place and leave $100. I got a whole lot of things I can buy with $100. So, but yeah. Uh, Jackie says, I used to go to bingo with my grandmother, fond memories, and that's what I've even taken my mother, and she enjoyed it, too, because she used to go all the time when she was younger. So, yeah, Tiffany says, I won 500 at the first time at bingo. I was the youngest there. That was like 12 plus years ago. Haven't found a local bingo hall since. I've been back in Havasaw. Patricia Carlucio just came in saying, hey, T and everyone. Just trying to go back and make sure that I get everybody. Uh, quilting for the soul is saying good night, everyone. God bless y'all and your family. Mary's here going, oops, I didn't know why, but I've been waiting till 8 to join. My day has been like this all day. Yes, and I've had, that's the issues with that pineapple quilt. <laughs> I've had days of issues with that pineapple quilt. And yesterday i just finally gave it the hands up the white flag you win it's just sitting on my long arm at this point um so teresa says thank you t good night everybody you're welcome teresa cheryl saying good night a lot of people are saying good night so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up here thanks everybody for your time tonight appreciate it and i will see you all saturday on the live chat i'm going to try to get this part three where i'm sewing even though i don't have it all done i was trying to get it but well, maybe i won't upload part three 
Maybe I'll wait and upload part three because if I'm sewing on this on Saturday, I really wanted to get a whole picture of the quilt included in part three. And I won't have that um, until it's sewed. So maybe I will not have part three up. I'll uh, look at what video is up next for me to edit, okay? Oh, I got to do the September completions. I recorded it today, so it'll be in this same shirt uh, when you see that um, video. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. I will see you all Saturday. Bye, everybody. Stay blessed and stay safe.